Abby has, if she could share it. I will just share it now, Pippa will wait one sec. Um. <laughs> you see my screen, Pippa, or not? No. <laughs> okay. Hold on, okay, there. Um, there? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so um, we're a collective called Somewhere In Between. Um, and we've, we've just started, but we, we hope to be putting on exhibitions in the future and doing talks and really connecting with others who use printmaking and photography. Give the next slide, please, Tabby. Sorry, missing people. Moving. So the, the six artists, um, myself, Pippa Healy, um, I use screen printing, photography, um, iPhones, um, screen etch resist, um, image transfers. I use a number of different processes in my work. Um, Elise Varga, who um, uses photography as well as her principal way of making work, but she really takes into different um, areas and is, is doing some really interesting work about motherhood. Um, Zoe Pritchard, who uses photography again, but then takes it completely into a handmade um, area and really changes the way her images work. Tabby Cooper, who uses digital and moving images. Um, Rosie Zielinski, who uses again moving images and photography. And Lauren Collier, who uses, um, she does wood blocks and she does lots of different types of um, processes. Um, and the next slide, please going there. so i'll start off um, with my work um, my name is pippa healy um, i'm a photographer principally and printmaker and i also make zines um, and my work is um, my practice is diaristic and it's consumed with themes around loss longing violence and grief um, my practice is very emotionally driven and my experiences shape the way i make my work i'm fascinated by the abject and the sublime and the duality of facts and fiction and this series is called the lake and it was my um, my ma final work um, this this series is made in austria around lake Eltus um, last year and um, i i'd had a brain scan i wasn't feeling well and i needed to go somewhere very quiet and trying to gather my thoughts and i i, I came to this place um, and each day I would walk around a lake for a couple of hours and I was taking images um, very unconsciously um, and just kind of, I kept stopping and taking images. And the images I took were taken on a Contax T2 camera, which is an automatic film camera. Um, and I used a film which has a light leak in it. So the images have these kind of red um, kind of glows on them, which I kind of wanted to show myself in the landscape. And it was a way of, of putting myself in there. Um, so I took these images um, and brought them back um, to London and started to work with them. And this image here is actually a composite of two images. So the large image is of um, a mountain called Loder, which is where um, in the Second World War, the Nazis um, put their put the stolen art. Um, and it was a place where all this work was, was kind of hidden away. Um, and the lake is in front of it. Um, and the two images, I wanted to fragment uh, the image and try and show how my brain was fragmented, I was fragmented, but um, the kind of presence of the, the mountains and the lakes was so strong that it kind of overtook everything. Um, and the next slide, please. Um, this image um, is, uh, it's one image, but I've, I've taken it in two different ways. So. The large image is a positive uh, image of the lake and I took that image into screen etch resist which is um, a process whereby I took the image, I separated it into four colours, you then put it onto a silk screen, you silk screen that onto metal plates and then you etch them and you create an image which is a very kind of long process um, but the image then becomes something else it's almost like an engraving it, beca it becomes something very different from the photograph and the image inside is the same image but inverted and that's a screen print which I then uh, made a negative version of that image so the two together I kind of wanted this repetition of the same because I was doing this walk the same image a number of times but showing it in different ways 
and I wanted the, the series to be quite cinematic and by making these images you know principally at the beginning with film it does it did lend itself to be something quite different uh, and if I could see the, the final one please so this image actually is um, of one of my brain scans which um, I then uh, enlarged uh, probably about 400 times um, and it's actually a, this is a silk screen image um, so when I came on to printmaking I hadn't done any printmaking before and I, I don't draw I take photographs and so I, I I'm probably quite a messy printmaker so this image um, well, it's a number of colours on a silk screen, but I also put in, I put ink on the screen and I use sponges and worked myself, you know, worked the image into itself. And I really enjoy taking photographic images and taking them apart and putting them back together again. So um, the series has images of the lake, but it also has pictures of my brain scan. And um, the two together, the, the lake, uh, the, the picture of the brain scan kind of relates to the lake and, and kind of walking. And also um, I thought that the, it looked a bit like the water, uh, like a map. So uh, the, the, the two images kind of, uh, I think went well together. And this series also, I've made a zine, which um, I'm about to produce. And um, the, the, it's, the, the, the images are going off to different exhibitions. So um, hopefully they'll be, more to see with this. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say about my work, but I'm going to hand over to the next person now, who is Tabby. <laughs> Elise. Yeah, Elise. Thank you. Hi there. Um, so my name is uh, Boglarka Elise Varga, and uh, I recently graduated uh, together with Pippa and um, Zoe um, and uh, so I am going to talk about my work um, uh, okay so um, while while elaborating in the subject of, of motherhood and its complexity uh, mainly focusing on identity and privacy separation and belonging my primary artistic tool is the camera uh, I use uh, as well digital um, uh, my iPhone basically and um, analog camera camera um, mostly 35 millimeters. Um, I take photographs as well as I collect them and I do this in order to record and to document time. Uh, my snapshots often follow motives and repetition and they are reflecting the everyday and the overlook rituals of my family life. Uh, my analog and digital images are a point of departure for my artworks in various printmaking techniques. In this sense, the photographs become a material and an object itself. Um, I find interesting how the different printmaking processes or even a digital program like Photoshop can alter or even glitch my images. Um, when I got to this point, when I got to this point, you can see in this first image, this is um, two of my analog um, scans, um, what Photoshop glitched and Every time I pressed enter or even I pressed a, a tab on my computer, a new glitched image was born. So I, um, I screenshotted them and then I saved them. I thought it was going to be very interesting. And then later I actually realized that this happened many times um, while I was, I was doing printmaking basically. Um, so at this point, I, I let go control and left the medium and the material to dictate. Uh, I, had to, I had to let control of my images and just, uh, and just see what's happening with them. Um, can I have the next image? Um, and then basically lockdown happened and uh, I found really hard to 
to work. Uh, and they had this, uh, this idea of how can I experiment um, with the intersection of photography and printmaking. Um, and they had a few um, photopolymer plates cut really small, basically. They were, these prints are six centimeter long and three, uh, four centimeter uh, wide. And I put them in an analog camera and I saw what is going to happen. Um, I was interested if something will turn out, if my um, experiment will result in something and these prints um, came out. Uh, these are basically the positives. So wherever there is the, the light touched the plate, there is darkness on this image. And um, I eventually sent it off to one of my colleagues, um, Marigold, and she printed to me and sent it back to me. This all happened during lockdown, which was very interesting. Um, uh, in my practice uh, and in my work, I, uh, I think one of my, one of the, artist is really influencing me and how she's thinking about pre-making and the play. It is Dora Mar Marer. Uh, she's a Hungarian artist um, and uh, she said that the following, she says the print of an object is not just a document of the condition of that object but also an image. Um, and they found really interesting and sort of reflected that my images are getting new featured and they are getting their own and new memory through the printmaking process. It all felt like the, the end product is a double exposure in this way. Can I have my last image, please? Um, so this is also um, uh, a, a print of mine. Um, I use uh, direct uh, image transfer on uh, zinc plates and then I edge them. And here what happens again, I, I let the process to, to take lead on my work. So I'm never really in control how this end result, how the end product is going to look like. And I think this is very, very similar to memory. Um, the image becomes a, a memory, a, a frozen, frozen image of a moment. It bec becomes again, um, becomes again the memory of the plate itself. So um, yeah, basically. That is about my work. This is my last image. And I um, hand now to Zoe. She's the next person. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'm Zoe. Um, so my practice explores the world of ambiguous imagery through the lens of photography and photomechanical print processes. I'm interested in creating deeply mysterious monographic imagery, which seems recognizable, yet also generates a worth of uncertainty imagery that is open to more than one interpretation and which has no obvious meaning. My image, imagery is often in monochrome, suggesting to the viewer that the everyday material is something from the past. Digital print and lithography are my main methods of working which all have an innovative with the materials in hand. It is this combination of dialogue across print languages which really excites me. In bringing together digital and traditional printmaking, the image becomes ambiguous the viewer is in a creative engagement with the image far more than the initial identification of the image. Therefore, the act of seeking forces the viewer to be proactive in search of the space within the imagery. In an interview with Shirley Cockerton, the journal of Contemporary Art in 1997, Uta Berth states, I have never been interested in making a photograph that describes what the world I live in looks like, but I am interested in what pictures of the world look like. Like Berth, I use found imagery along my own photographs, often taken out of 
taking looking out of spaces at night which are often blurry and out of focus in efforts to re-inscribe the relationship between vision and the world. Blowing up these images and exposing the grain on Photoshop, I want the viewer to take their time and become aware of their gaze and the idea of looking. Uta Berth in conversation with Rose Olivia's discusses how she keeps trying to find ways to shift the viewer's attention away from the object that they are looking at and towards their own perceptual pro process in relation to that object. The question for me always is, how can I make you aware of your own activity of looking instead of losing your attention to thoughts about what it is that you are looking at? In my own paper Lufferfuss and transfers, I want to foreground the perceptual experience over anything we may think about whatever it is we may be looking at. Removing the foreground and blurring the background, I want the viewer to be immersed in the visual experience of looking. Can I have the next slide, please? Having gone back to my family home and only being able to create where I was living, I had become confined to an interior space, making art with the materials I had to hand, whilst thinking about the photographic image now from a distance. Working with materials I had around my house, I had made my own printing plate, by mixing gelatin sachets with water and water-based inks. Having no access to the digital printer, I placed found materials onto the plate to reveal unpredictable marks, textures and tones, whilst questioning the physical substance of the work. Through this new finding, I want to continue to explore the limits of this non-photographic process to further exhaust out the imagery, opening up a new space for both the artist and the viewer to experience the world around us. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Within my practice, I find myself working for an assortment of images and processes, with each one influencing and merging together when presenting my work to the viewer. By splicing the space to disrupting and fragmenting together, it provokes the act of looking and further sense of questioning. Viewed from a distance, the work is challenging in both size and subject. However, when we take a step nearer, however, we see the print close up, the entire constitution which at first could be seen as blurry and out of focus, becomes clearly defined and up to interpretation to the viewer. The act of physically approaching the works results in the image becoming clearer. And that's where I'm going to finish today, and I'm going to pass over to Tabby now. Thank you. Hi, guys. So um, my practice revolves around the idea of longing for the past whilst being playfully aware that we live hand in hand with the internet. So I'm almost weaving out of the digital and physical constantly when making, which kind of replicates the way in which we live our lives. And then I work in a very lo-fi way using my iPhone or using a scanner or using materials from a craft box and then scanning them in. And then I might just use an HB pencil or something to edit my work. So this is kind of reminiscent of childhood Saturday sat at the kitchen table crafting. There's an open-endedness within my work because I'm constantly playing, experimenting, ex experimenting and exploring when creating artworks, which kind of keeps me going and creates momentum within my practice. Um, so I usually start off an artwork by scanning in something like an object and then I edit that um, object on Photoshop or something and then I might print it off and then on that printed piece of paper I might scrumple it up or edit it with a pencil and then I might scan it back in so it's a constant weaving of the physical and the digital together um, so there's this constant flux and constant shifting and altering so nothing is ever permanent almost it's always in a state of movement so photography for me is a form of printmaking as it works as I work in a very layered way with photography. Um, so there's multiple steps and processes to occur before I have a final image. Um, and there's this Hito Storel quote, which I think which is quite interesting. So images are not objective or subjective renditions of a pre-existing condition or, or merely treacherous appearances. They are rather nodes of energy and matter that migrate across different supports, shaping and affecting people landscapes, politics, and social systems. They acquired an uncanny ability to proliferate, transform, and activate. So, um, yeah, I'll talk about this image that's in front of you now. So this image is called um, We're Not in Sainsbury's Anymore, and it's the background of this image is of paper forms that I have taken photographs of. 
and then I have started photoshopping and it becomes this kind of so-fi, lo-fi looking backdrop, kind of reminiscent of like 80s cartoons. And then the object that you can see is a mod rock sculpture. So this physical object is now becoming part of the digital, which I think is quite an interesting thing. So this sense of artificial. And let me move on to my next slide. So then this image that I made is called I Can't Seem to Find My Keys and it's on A4 graph paper and if you can probably see there's some areas that are filled in with graphite and there's this sense of the physical and the digital again um, but also graph paper creates this idea for me of being a playground for abstract ideas and playfulness to occur so it's almost a base layer for me to work on which I think is quite interesting and then with this um, image. I made this during lockdown so it's a big digital print and then I cut into it and then my mod rock sculptures I had photographed becomes almost 2D sculptures if that makes sense it's kind of like a pop-up book and um, yeah there's a sense of the portable within this sculpture too which I think is quite interesting. So when making artwork the artists I reference are Hayley Tompkins, Jeter, use of materials and her relationship with the lo-fi and there's a sense of um, intimacy and in, informal within her work which I'm quite interested in and then Seth Price in this anthropological way of looking at technology and then I constantly refer back to artist Polly Applebaum due to her use of craft and colour and there's this comforting sense of not nostalgia but of home almost and also there's a sense of playfulness in her work and in adult life, we don't always have that every day popping up in our lives, which I think it creates a fleeting moment almost for us. So when looking at a playful artwork, there's a fleeting moment of joy almost. So yes, that's my work, sort of. So I'm going to pass on to Rosie now, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Tabby. Um, so hi, I'm Rosie, and today I'll be talking about how my work explores the mediums of photography and printmaking. So as you can see on here, this is actually a still from a video that I projected onto fabric. It's called Unquiet Land and it's a, a slow moving video. My practice utilises both photographic imagery and challenges the way in which contemporary printmaking is perceived. My work attempts to communicate a poetic narrative of discovering solace within transient moments, experienced when encompassed by natural landscapes. Disorientation is evoked by disrupting the camera's vision, and this inevitably distorts the viewer's gaze. This fragmentation of imagery offers fleeting viewpoints and challenges the way we see and perceive landscape. I endeavour to create an awareness of the ephemeral that surrounds us through durational imagery, both within photography and moving imagery. This encourages the viewer to become more mindful and appreciative for the natural world that surrounds us. The ambiguous spaces that are depicted within my work offer the viewer time to slow down and reflect by engaging with the work by the prolonged gaze. Slowing down by elongating the narrative through slow cinema encourages a deeper appreciation and gratitude for the mundanity within our everyday lives. Time is a key element to my work and the perception of its passing elicits a sense of the in-between uh, creating durational imagery that appears timeless, suspended in a void-like liminal space. Artists who have been key influences to the development of my practice include Tasha Dean, Bill Viola, Hiroshi Sugimoto, Adav Kandir and Katrina Leakey. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, I've got a couple more stills. So this is the actual uh, video still that was projected onto the moving fabric. Um, I played about with um, moving imagery and started to look at how I can communicate this idea of slow looking um, via disrupting the playback speed of the video that I took. So it slowed down to about 10%, which creates sort of a, an otherworldly sort of ethereal feel to the piece. Um, and then next slide, please. And then I also started to play around with layering different um, moving imagery together so it creates this sort of distortion of chronological time and disrupts the perception of place as well. So that's a little bit about me and my work. Um, 
unfortunately Lauren can't be with us today so I'm going to pass over to Elise who's going to say a little bit about her work. Hi there, me again. Good, uh, so I'm uh, going to read out her, um, her little text. Okay, I just stopped my video. Uh, you will hear in the background some noises. I will try to, uh, just a sec. Uh, I am interested by the ways in which photography and a constructed image can alter our perception and relation to the physical materiality of place within the digital world. Taking a multidis multidisciplinary approach across new and traditional techniques, my work combines photography, projection, moving image, monotype and woodcut, exploring the potential of contemporary printmaking. Using coastal landscape as a subject matter, these works explore the indeterminacy between the physical material um, and the simulated through imagery that plays with scale, surface and disruption. Reimagining and reinterpreting our preconceived ideas of knowing our surroundings without physically experiencing them, it aims to provoke ideas around fabrication, truth and authenticity authenticity sorry uh, maybe next image i have always been interested in the potential of photographic image when combined with constructed imagery imagery in understanding our perception of materiality of place within the digital world in exploring these ideas i, I have worked across different processes and mediums endlessly intrigued by the ways in which our reading of the surface of an image is altered when confronted by a plethora of related yet visually differing information. Recently, I have looked to a film as a means of expanding my research of photographic imagery, imagery something that the 1966 film Blow Up, directed by Michelangelo Antonioni, comments on in particular. This again reinforced my ideas surrounding the camera capturing what we cannot see and how the supposed referent nature of photography can be used to question our perception of the world. Can I have my next image? Touching upon how different incarnations of blown up, cropped, still and moving images can be used together to develop a scene that almost creates a simulation of the original image. The film comments on imag imagery re remaining partially recognizable, but taking a new meaning when it presented differently, transporting the viewer to a new place. I found an interesting relevance to these ideas in the current post-digital age. How do we determine truth when we experience so much of our Im imagery through a secondary basis. Uh, last image, I don't know if there's another image. This was something I have since experimented with, taking videos and photos of the surface of my monotypes and woodcuts before digitally protecting, projecting the results, often combining with different surfaces that interrupt the image through a material process. This reimagining of physical phys physically tangible handmade works by means of photography into something digital and ephemeral has been endlessly fascinating to me and continues to be in integral to the informing of my work. Thank you. Thank you, Lise. Um, and here is our Instagram uh, page. Uh, which we've just started um, and we will be showing work and, and showing other people's work that we admire um, and really interested in collaborating with others who use um, photography and printmaking. Um, and if anyone's got any questions, um, we're very happy to answer any. If you, you can unmute yourselves if you want to. Hi. Hi. Hi, it's Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi. Um, first of all, congratulations to all of you for your presentations, which I, I very much enjoyed. Um, I think one thing that, that kind of comes out that connects a um, lot of the work is the sense that you are discovering 
imagery through the making of the work rather than uh, you know having a, a predetermined idea of what the image is before and I wondered if you might say some whether some of you might like to reflect on that everybody else is muted <laughs> um, I mean for myself um, yeah because I'm not I have you know I haven't trained as a printmaker by I was really thinking about the image and once I started doing it into a different process it did start to change you know how it looked and how I felt about it and it made mm. it a much more emotional uh, experience for me much more performative by mm -hmm. you know by having to use the etching press or having to spend a long time inking up things it it made the made it work and it really changed for me the you know what my work was about and it, and it, and it, it gave so much more to it mm. Zoe? Yeah, no, I, was just, I, was, I didn't know if someone else was going to say, but yeah, like you said, expand on by taking the image for your printmaking and doing the process, the image transforms and takes you into a new avenue, because I always start with found imagery, but it's the physical act of turning it into a print that takes the image somewhere else, somewhere that you didn't expect for the image to take you, and it's the physical act that, yeah, transforms the image to a new place, so I think, yeah, that's a big part of all our practice, I think, yeah. And can I add, can I add something else um, that, that I think is very interesting in a time when um, the fidelity of images is getting more and more um, resolved, the resolution is getting higher, the capacity of, of our um, film, our, our phone cameras getting better and better. So what a lot of you seem to be interested in is the degrading of images, of, of sort of the breaking down of an image, so that in a way it almost starts, um, you know, getting down to the very elements that make up the image itself. Is that, is that something that you feel you connect with? Uh, there was some uh, it the, actually I yesterday when I was and like during the week when I was thinking about uh, this presentation I did it was something it popped in my mind like how even in the past um, they would not they would addition an artwork because after edition 50 edition the, the matrix would be different the first image it won't be as the last so i was thinking like how how the material how the, the matrix is such an alteration it and through time through printing it many many times the image can be different and this is very visible in my tiny photopolymer the first image is is has a different feeling to the last ones which I made recently and I haven't done so many maybe 15 or 17 prints and I and I find that one very interesting and this is when I was talking about how this image itself how the, the material itself gets its own memory it, it starts to live again a very fixed image becomes alive again and this I think that is that is quite interesting. Um, I was going to add something to not to Elisa's bit but back to the question of um, not super high-tech images because um, I read a lot about post-internet and the idea of hauntology and like the idea of the images today just floating around everywhere and they're just always being copied and they're not actually high quality all the images we see in our every day to day lives so I think for me that's why I'm interested in lo-fi images and images that aren't the best quality and quite pixelated and not super polished if that makes sense yeah thank you um, and there's another question here from Laura Noble uh, which I'm going to direct at Rosie. Um, <laughs> do photographs feel as satisfying now after working with printmaking? Do you take a picture, find a picture and then create? Or is it the choice of subjects a first step 
Can you tell us the starting point? She says it's two questions, really. I think for me, it's quite sort of organic in the way that I don't want it to be um, kind of manufactured in the way that I'm sort of actively seeking something out. It's more that I sort of experience a moment which causes me to slow down and appreciate. And I think sort of have taken part of in doing printmaking. Uh, it's such, there's so many processes that takes such a lot of time to sort of create a piece of work. Um, I, I think that that helps with that kind of slowing down and the appreciation of what the image is, what you know you can get from it. So I think that, that photography and printmaking sort of do go hand in hand, especially for me in terms of a photograph is normally sort of perceived as being a snapshot in time. Whereas within my work, I, I'm trying to achieve sort of more of a durational um, sequence or period of time. Um, and then that goes back to the idea of we're looking at sort of that liminal space between photography and printmaking. So I think the sort of dialogues between them are really interesting. Zoe, do you have any? Yeah, just reading the question. So, uh, maybe the next question for you, Zoe. Um, well, for me, mm -hmm. photography has changed from you know, being involved with printmaking and taking my images apart and even taking them into CMYK has changed the way that I look. Definitely, I, I think I look in a different way now. Uh, so Zoe, do you, this is from Aaron, do you photograph through the lens of printmaking or do you print through the lens of photography? Mm. So I always start with an image um, and it's, it's always a photograph that I've taken myself just on my iPhone, it's very low tech or it's an image that I found from my surrounding areas. So I'm quite obsessed with finding the scraps of scanned pages at the library. And I, you know, when you scan a book or and you have the edge and it's all blurry, I absolutely love that. So I'm always finding found images from my surroundings and then I normally take them into Photoshop, so I blow them up so to expose the grain. So it turns into more ambiguous image, which you can't clearly identify. It's sort of on the edge of being or could it be this it was a bit too abstract to read so I think I always start mostly in photography but I always I don't always have an end point for my work I never take an image thinking oh I'm going to turn it into an etching I kind of let the work evolve through the process of printmaking and let my ideas and method of thinking evolve and let sort of the process take over the end result I don't ever take a photo and think oh I'm going to turn this into an edition of etching. I let the process sort of evolve. Sort of. So yeah, I always start with photograph um, and let the ideas take them away. Yeah. I don't know if that's the same for you, Pippa. Or... Yeah, I think I definitely echo that. You know, I don't think I'm going to make a photo polymer of this because, you know, I, I do take the, the image and then it's a natural progression, whether you image transfer it or you you play with it more, you take it beyond just the photograph, for me. How about you, Elise? Uh, yeah, the same. I usually, I like to shot, I like to make images, like, I have two projects, like a daily one, every day I took a few images, and then with my analog camera, I would just shot, um, I would just shot in two or three days and then, but I never have the idea I'm going to turn just, this is how I like to shot with my analog camera. And it's funny enough that I usually use from my analog camera, uh, my images, which are over or underexposed for my printmaking um, artworks. Uh, and I think there is something to do with the preciousness of the image and, but that is just like a personal, personal thing. And you, Rosie? I think I definitely agree with what Elise was saying about the sort of preciousness of the image. I think there's something, especially with analog photography, I think there's something quite tangible about it and sort of the idea of the memory and, you know, that it's kind of a history to it as well. I think that that's something I'd like to, explore possibly further with my own work as well. And Tabby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
is this so we're talking about um so with printmaking and photography i think i think through printmaking but i do a lot of digital prints i haven't actually used like traditional printmaking processes for a long time by year now um but i think digital printmaking I get quite excited by the paper that I'm using. And also you don't always know what's going to happen when you actually digitally print an image sometimes, if it's going to be good or if it's not going to be good. And I put a lot of bitmaps on. So yeah, I think through the idea of printmaking still, even though I'm using digital processes majority of the time now. Yeah, so yeah. Great, and I was going to mention, um, Laura's written um, uh, great stuff, Zoe. Um, Pippa, <laughs> about the difference between printmakers and their use of printmaking being different, intentions difference, reasons for using materials. Um, and I think, yes, um, we all see it in very different ways. And that's why as a collective, um, it's really interesting that we can talk about this and we do see things in different ways. Um, but we've, you know, I have to say, we've all really enjoyed our time at Camberwell and uh, have learned so much. Um, but, and thank you, Aaron, for your question. Um, and um, if anyone else has any more questions, please say now. Otherwise, um, I think we're going to wrap up. But um, please follow us on Instagram. And um, if you want to get involved uh, with us, please message us. And um, thank you for coming today. And um, yes, thank you for spending time with us. I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.